guys, Ramon Goose here. We're going to be looking at Jimi Hendrix's guitars. This is, in fact, part two of the history of Jimi Hendrix's guitars. We're going to start with the most famous of Jimi's guitars. This is known as the Woodstock Strat. The guitar itself is a Fender White Stratocaster with the serial number 240981. This guitar was a 1968 model and it featured a laminate maple fretboard. The nut had been switched around in its slot to accommodate Jimi's upside down stringing method. The tuners were F stamped Gluten tuners. Another interesting but obvious point to make about this guitar is it features uh, several cigarette burns on the headstock from where Jimi Hendrix kept his cigarettes. According to Mitch Mitchell, Jimi's drummer, Hendrix purchased this guitar from Manny's Music Store in New York in 1968. So based on the photos available, the Woodstock Strat was probably used from around late October or early November 1968. So to summarise, all the gigs played from November 68 were played on either the Black Strat, the Woodstock Strat or occasionally on a few Gibson guitars. The body of the guitar was made from alder wood whilst the neck was made of maple. In this photo here you can see damage done to the lacquer on the headstock from Jimi Hendrix's cigarettes that he put in between the strings. This is the patterned guitar strap um, as used by Hendrix at Woodstock. It was also used at the Hollywood Bowl in 1967 and several other performances. David Vega, lead guitarist of San Francisco funk band Graham Central Station, was given this guitar strap from a sound technician who worked at Woodstock. It went up for auction in 2008. So the common consensus is that Jimi Hendrix would continue to play this Olympic white Stratocaster well after Woodstock, including his final live performance at the Isle of Fernand in September 1970. Shortly after the show, Jimi gave the instrument to his drummer Mitch Mitchell. Mitch Mitchell would later describe the circumstances which led to him obtaining this guitar. I had given him a drum kit as a present some time before and I said to him, I'll have that guitar before you break it up. I do not think he would in fact have broken that particular guitar. He said in his way, you got it. And he then gave me the guitar. In retrospect, I think it was by way of a gift as my daughter had just been born a few days previously. Unknown to most people, Mitch Mitchell had actually held on to this guitar for many years after Jimmy had passed away until he finally decided to sell it at an auction held by Sotheby's in 1990. The guitar was sold to an Italian personality called Gabriella Asolani for the amount of £198,000. And Saloni held onto the guitar for two years until finally deciding to sell it to Microsoft CEO Paul Allen for an undisclosed sum. Although I've heard it on good authority that this was around $2 million. Before Allen passed away, he decided to house the guitar at the Experience Music Project in Seattle, Washington. The museum was founded in order to highlight the history of Jimi Hendrix as well as rock and roll in general. A note of its authenticity from a different auction of one of Jimi's guitars reads that two guitars were found in Electric Lady Studios by Jimi's management around the time of his death. A Samba Stratocaster that was the subject of the auction and a white maple Stratocaster with the serial number 240981, same as the Paul Allen Strat. This confirms that the Strat on display at the Seattle Museum did in fact belong to Jimmy. This statement actually raises a few questions because does this now mean that the white Olympic Strat was given to Mitch Mitchell after Jimmy's death when Mitch Mitchell says it was given to him whilst Jimmy was alive? It also means that the Seattle Woodstock Strat was not actually used on the road, that it was kept at Electric Lady Studios. If you check out this photo here, you can see that there's clearly a scratch on the guitar. This scratch is now visible on, on all the photos following this date. Bear in mind that the Woodstock guitar held at the Seattle Museum does not actually have this scratch. So I think this raises a few questions. Is the Woodstock guitar at Seattle really the Woodstock guitar or is it a, was it a guitar that was used in the studio only? Could the Woodstock guitar be the same guitar that was used after May the 30th 1970 that developed a scratch and now has gone missing? And was the guitar that Mitch Mitchell sold at auction really used at Woodstock? If you check out this photo here, which is kind of like a side-by-side -side photo, one of the guitar held at the Seattle Museum and one of the guitar used at Woodstock, you can kind of see that the wood has some similar features. So it's more than likely that that was the actual guitar. Guys, the question remains, what happened to the guitar with the scratch? Where is it now? If you've got any thoughts on that, please let me know. This next guitar is a 1967 Gibson SG that Jimmy used uh, a number of times in concert. And this appeared on the Dick Cavett show in September of 1969. The SG was a natural fit for Hendrix since its symmetrical cutaways allowed him to flip the right-handed guitar over for lefty playing. 
exactly as he did for Stratocasters. The guitar was equipped with a vibrato tailpiece and three humbuckers. On the Dick Cavett show you can hear him playing Isabella and Machine Gun. But most famously Jimmy always brought the SG out for the song Red House. There is a great video of Jimmy playing a 12 minute version of the song at a gig in Stockholm, Sweden in 1969. Other features of the custom SG model are of course the diamond shaped inlays, the binding on the headstock as well as the pearl block fretboard inlays, gold plated hardware and an ebony fretboard. Custom SGs and Les Pauls were both the top of the line models with all the bells and whistles. The SG guitar was first seen with Jimmy on November the 28th, 1968 at Rhode Island Auditorium. Following the auction of this guitar, it has ended up in the hands of the Hard Rock Cafe and is now on display in Atlantic City. There's little information about this next guitar, which is a Gibson SG Custom and it was in Walnut. This was actually used by Jimmy in New York in January 1970. It was whilst performing with Elvin Bishop at Ungano Club in New York City. Apparently the guitar was a present from the club's owners to Jimmy because Jimmy was a frequent visitor and often jammed at the club. The exact year that this guitar was made is not known but my guess is it will be 1969. As mentioned in part one, Jimmy used a 1967 Gibson Flying V. His second Flying V was made in 1969. It was a tobacco burst model with a tremolo. Its serial number was 932954. Hendrix used this guitar between January 1969 and May 1970. There's not many photos of Jimmy with this guitar. Here's one photo of Jimmy backstage at Madison Square Garden on May the 18th, 1969. In my personal opinion, it seems that Jimi Hendrix only used this guitar because he was waiting for his left-handed custom model to be made by Gibson. This guitar now resides in the Las Vegas Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. This next guitar is a Flying V that Gibson made especially for Jimmy in 1969, although it probably left the factory in 1970. Its serial number is 849476. It was also the first time that Gibson inlaid a Pearl logo on a Flying V. The split diamond inlays were requested specially by Jimmy. It was a new design at the time and it was made to represent native Indian arrowheads. All the hardware is gold. The vibrato is a typical flat mount base. No difference left or right with the special string anchor bit and lever. It also had a plain black truss rod cover reading custom, identical in shape to the truss rod covers installed on Les Paul Customs. Jimmy first used the guitar on April the 25th, 1970 at the Los Angeles Forum. He also used it on May the 8th, 1970 at the University of Oklahoma Fieldhouse, Norman. Jimmy used this guitar on several other concerts, including the famous Isle of Wight concert on August the 30th, 1970. This next guitar is a combination of a Fender Stratocaster and a Fender Telecaster. The neck is from a late 1960s Telecaster and it features a maple fretboard. It has a skunk stripe on the back of the neck as can be seen from this photograph. In 2003, Neil Moser, a Hollywood luthier, talked about a guitar that he fixed for Jimi Hendrix. After Jimmy's roadies had come to Moser's guitar shop and asked for a replacement neck since Jimmy had broken the original one at a gig. The neck was broken and they wanted a replacement. Fender didn't have any at the time, but they did have some Telecaster necks. We got one and I modified the butt to fit the strap body. That guitar ended up in a collage on the Hendrix in the West album. This Strato Telecaster can be seen at the Newport Pop Festival on June 1969. Thanks guys for watching this video. I'm going to be back very soon with some more Jimi Hendrix videos. That includes the history of his amplifiers and effects. Until then, please like, share and subscribe and hope to see you soon. Take care. All the best.